Hello there. My name is Stephanie Benedetto and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, also known as 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that is committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles as introduced by Sydney Banks to people throughout the world. And today we are here with Sandra Koenig and she's gonna be speaking about inspiration and insight. Let me give you a little bit of background about Sandra. Sandra wants every conversation and training to deepen your understanding of the simple truths that will change your experience of work and life. She enjoys helping clients thrive and innovate in their lives and businesses. She brings a sense of joy and adventure to her work, excels at big picture thinking and strategy, and is a creative and intuitive partner who is genuinely committed to the well-being and success of her clients. Sandra is a certified master transformative coach and was on the staff at Michael Neal's Super Coach Academy from 2017 to 2020. She lives in the San Francisco Bay Area in the midst of all its beauty and diversity. When she has an hour to spare, she indulges her passion for painting. Or she shows up here to grace us with her presence in the 3PGC universe. So without further ado, Sandra, it's all yours. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, really nice to see so many friends here on the call and some people I haven't met before, but I'm just delighted that you're all here. Um, today, I'm going to talk about something that I don't talk about that much. It's sort of a new thing for me to really come forward talking about creativity and inspiration and insight, but it's something near and dear to my heart. Those of you who know me, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my personal creative journey. As a lot of you know me in a business context where I work with creativity in business. I spent all those years branding big companies and now I help a lot of people launch their businesses, uh, which brings me a lot of joy. But I also have always had a lot of passion for my own creative process. My mother tells a story when I was little, uh, I would draw on pretty much any surface, like in her, you know, me drawing all over the walls of the kitchen and getting in trouble and her putting in my room. And before she could close the door, I was drawing on the walls in there. Like I was just unstoppable in that way. And I think I've always had, there's an image maker inside of me. Like I really enjoy that. Um, and when I was going to college, I ended up studying design, which I loved, but not in the same way as sort of freeform creativity. It was great that I chose something where I could make a living, but there was always this passion and desire for another creative outlet, something that could just be mine. And um, when I was in my late twenties, a friend of mine told me about a painting class she was going to, and at this process oriented, oriented studio. And I felt like my whole body was on fire. Like I needed to go there. And at, at the first class it was just amazing. And it was sort of this intuitive painting. We're using the paper more as an inner exploration than for product. And I probably spent about 25 years involved in that process oriented painting, uh, which was a deep love of mine. And simultaneously during that time, I got a degree in counseling psychology uh, with a minor in expressive arts therapy. And I learned how to work with moving people through different expressive arts to create healing and transformation. And that's still a deep love of mine. Um, I would say six or seven years ago, I was apprenticing with Michael Neal and I was in a small group with him. He's, those of you who aren't in the three principles community, he's a coach who has a lot of impact. Anyway, I was in a mastermind group with him and we were talking about what we really wanted. And I had this moment when I realized I really wanted to make art that would be in the world impacting people. I was used to painting off on my own kind of hiding what I created from the process world because we were using the paper more for freedom than for product. Anyway, at that point in time, I started painting at home and it was just like I was on fire. I, I 
was making five or six paintings a day. I was only painting for an hour, but it was just moving through me really fast. And I was painting more figuratively. And then at some point I started to experiment to paint abstractly because I'd always loved abstract art, but I didn't really have any sense of how to do it. Um, so now all these years later, I'm still painting abstractly and, and loving it, but I'm completely untrained. Um, but it gives me so much joy. And I know that some of you here today are also artists. And so I appreciate just being able to share all that with you. Like it's just this whole unfolding, but beyond the visual arts, I've also been involved in other, other forms of art. Like I was in a, um, I grew up doing a lot of dance, more ballet and modern. And then as adult fell in love with partner dancing and was even in a group for several years that traveled and performed uh, internationally. We did all sorts of American dance. Um, I've also done a significant amount of writing and I've got probably three quarters of a book complete at this point. So I'm, I'm very much, I feel like my life is focused on creativity. Even my coaching business, it's seeing the creative capacity in everybody. Before I stumbled on this understanding we call the three principles, I would have told people as a coach, I was interested in working with people that were kind of change makers who were interested in innovation. And when I came across this understanding, I realized, oh, I could facilitate bringing that forth because everybody has that capacity. That creative capacity is often just waiting there for us to notice what we can create. It's, it's kind of incredible. Um, I mean, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the relationship between inspiration and insight and the three principles we often are talking about insight and the importance of seeing something new and how do we cultivate that? Because it's through insight that we can change or we can see something with fresh eyes. And it feels so closely related to inspiration. So I thought I'd read you some definitions I came upon of this. Uh, so you can see, you can hear for yourself. So inspire, it's to fill someone with the urge or ability to do something, especially to do something creative, to create a feeling, especially a positive one in a person, to animate someone with such a feeling. You know, when we talk about being inspired, to give rise to, it also means to breathe in, to inhale. And the origin of the word uh, has to do, it says the word was originally used referring to a divine or supernatural being in the sense of imparting a truth or idea to someone. Isn't that kind of cool? That because I do think that is at the heart of inspiration. It's something greater than us is moving through us. When we're truly inspired, we're being moved by something else. Now, insight, the, the definition for insight is the power act of seeing into a situation, the act or result of apprehending the inner nature of things or of seeing intuitively. And the origin has to do with seeing in like insight that's that's where it comes from and in my experience often there's some sort of insight that inspires me to action like when I was in that mastermind group with Michael I had an insight like oh I've been suppressing this desire for years out of loyalty to my painting community these people were my spiritual song. I loved them. I loved everything about what they were up to. But I had to even break out of that box. And it was a big step for me to really trust that that was leading me somewhere. And I'm curious, I know not everybody's on camera, but you can raise, does everybody know how to raise their hand? Like if any but here, like who here has some sort of creative 
practice or process they're involved with in a pretty consistent way. If you could just raise your hand, it'd be fun for me to see. I think it's probably pretty much everybody, I hope. Or that's why you'd be here. Like you're curious about this topic. Um, and I'm trying to think what else I want to talk about. I lost my train of thought looking at you all. I know that when I paint, when I'm standing there painting, my intention is always to surrender to the process, to let go, to have less of me there and let whatever wants to move me, move me. And one of the interesting things I think about the creative process is it pushes us towards the edges of whatever box we've created for ourselves. It pushes us towards the unknown, towards the unfamiliar. And the mind often kicks up activity the closer we get to that edge, that we, um, I know for me, I like I recently, this is, I hope this story is okay with you all, but maybe six or seven months ago, my older sister died quite unexpectedly. And the day she died, I decided to paint. Like I was in incredible grief and shock. And I was hating this painting coming out of me. It was bright yellow. And I felt like I was trying to capture the feeling of her spirit leaving her body. And there was so much judgment going in, on in my head, hating this and telling myself to stop. And like, why do I paint? I should never paint again. It's all this vitriol just goes on and on and on. And that's the point when understanding state of mind and the power of thought can be really useful. That if we learn to just stay in the flow and ignore what the mind is doing, creation and inspiration will take us somewhere. Really beautiful. Does this make sense? Does anybody have questions, comments at this point? So if you do, I'm gonna I'm going to invite you to raise your digital hand. You can go down on your Zoom screen to the reactions button and raise your hand and we can see you. It looks like Gretchen, did you have your hand up? Did you want to speak? I do. It, first, it's wonderful to see people. It's been a long time. <laughs> and I really love this, Sandra, because I understand that creativeness just unfolding. And that's how my artwork is. That's how my writing is. That's how my poetry is. And when you said break out of the box, I wrote down break out of every box. Do not let myself be boxed in. I'm too old to be boxed in <laughs> anymore. And um, and one of my boxes that I've lived in, believe it or not, for a long time is to be silent under any type of slight edginess or confrontation, you know, from a mild discomfort to, you know, an explosion to just be silent because that's how I survived growing up. Silent, keep your head down, stay out of the way. No, and I, I think that's true for so many of us, Gretchen, like that that um, we also are not raised to hang out in the discomfort, which is required mm -hmm. of us in the creative process, like to hang out there, to, to stay with it, to be willing to be uncomfortable. In order to create something new, we're going to hang out there. I mean, and when I, when I, one of the gifts I think of being engaged in a creative process is all the insight it gives us to ourselves. Like my personal experience of insight is often that it's humbling, you know, to mm -hmm. see the craziness of my mind when I'm making this painting the day my sister died. Like as if it matters, if the painting is good or bad. Like I just needed to have that connection to the divine no matter what it looked like. 
it's like welcome everything. Everything is a gift, even when it's wrapped in very strange ways. It's still a gift. And sometimes I'm better at welcoming those than others. <laughs> yeah, like I think we all are. It's just yeah. our, yeah. as our state of mind goes up and down, you know, it can feel and look really different. Chris, did you have a, a question or comment? Yes, yes. I, hello, Sandra. Hi, Chris. So good to see you. Yeah, so, it, yeah, some years ago, right now. But for me, it's really about the, the principles. Is that was uh, I, I did some uh, some things on creativity some years ago, and um, I had this insight uh, that made me um, draw. Well, I, I made a process I called drawing out your potential, uh, which was because I noticed that if I was drawing, which I was always doodling while I was listening to people, I could listen much better. It was as if it was as if it was it, it was as if I could I could stop the analytical mind and listen with some some uh, different part of me. And um, and I could draw some things like uh, using it for some coaching, and I could draw draw some things. And I said, "That's interesting." And I'd ask my client, I'd ask, uh, "Is this?" Does this make any sense? Uh, and the, the the person would say, "Yes, it certainly does." So somehow or another, using art that way was uh, one of the things that opened up uh, for a, a different dimension. I think, in a way, um, a good friend died. I also draw made a drawing of the uh, uh, soul leaving the body, and so I could I could recognize that what you said. But it also meant that. What I've been doing for the last three years is I've been making a drawing a day, uh, even though it, well, also the days when I don't feel like it, when the weather's bad or I have a headache, I'll make a drawing, whatever, maybe just some lines, but just by committing to doing that, that's opened up, uh, that's really changed my life in many ways. Uh, and you know, I've been into photography, but drawing is, is so, is so, uh, it's such, such a wonderful way of getting closer to your own uh, truth, I think. So, yeah, that's my five cents. No, it's beautiful. I love, I love hearing about your creative process. I, I recently have been reading the book, um, My Stroke of Insight. I don't know if any of you are familiar about that. It's um, yeah, about, I know it. about this brain scientist who had a stroke and how she loses the capacity of the, is it the, I always get the sides confused, but she loses capacity on the side of the brain that's more analytical speech oriented. And she has quite an exquisite experience of feeling one with the universe. And, and to me in reading that, I started to have some understanding of why it's so helpful to learn to quiet the mind that analytical mind to turn towards the other side of the, the brain that is based more on imagery and um, feeling and the gifts that are there when the analytical, analytical mind quiets. And I think we often see that people in the three principles as their understanding deepens, often some new creativity emerges because the mind has quieted. It's like they can, they can hear that part of them that really wants to come forth and engage in a, in a creative way, in a different way, in a new way, or is willing to experiment. So thank you. Well, for me, it's like a contemplative thing, isn't it? Where it really, it's it's uh, it's a sacred space. So uh, thank you. It is. It is. It feels very sacred to me. I, I feel like on my best days, when I'm writing or painting or dancing, that something so much larger than me is moving me, that it's not me. It's not my only part is to get out of the way and, and, and be the vehicle, not, 
not in charge. And that can feel unnerving at times, for sure. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. And it's new for me to come forth and talk about this, even though I've been involved in the creative process in so many ways over the years. I'm used to just talking about it in business, but I think there's so many gifts and just having some fun with your own creative process, not necessarily taking it seriously. You know, allowing yourself to play, allowing yourself to experiment, try new things. Like I went to a, I went to an oil painting workshop this fall and um, was a bit frustrated in that it was very product oriented. We, they really wanted us to paint what we could see. And I'm used to really not, I'm used to painting from the inside, whatever it is I'm doing. And um, I wouldn't say my paintings were the finest, but I had so much fun anyway. Just being engage engaged in it and um, just trying something new. I learned a lot about how messy oil paints are. That was sort of hilarious, like that you could get paint on your coat and then be leaving your mark all day, all over the place. <laughs> Not intentionally. Um, so today, part is. are there any more questions? Comments? Because I also wanted to give you guys a little taste. Oh, Mika. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. I'm so glad I was able to tune in here. Um, I, I just to comment really about how us being a vessel. I always feel that as an artist, like our our job is really just to be open and let the energy move through us. And the more we can do that with out analyzing what we're doing just letting it flow i find for me like i often surprise myself in terms of what comes out like just when i'm thinking about it while i'm doing it it's it's never as fun <laughs> and you know, it's like I'm more in judgment about, oh, this doesn't look good or that doesn't, and that type of thing. But when I do just allow myself to be in the flow and just be in the process, I always say that it's about the process, not the end result. When I can really honor that, then I tend to be happier afterwards too, like on all accounts in terms of what comes out in the painting and also just the way I feel in that process. Um, so I love that you share that. And sometimes I, <clears throat> I did CTI last year, <clears throat> creating the impossible. And so in that one, I had a lot of other things going on in my life. And I, so I knew the timing wasn't good to like do it in terms of doing a big project, but I said, just to be in the creative flow, I'm going to do it with no pressure. So just having my sketchbook or just doing something, just, I didn't care, just something every day was really exciting and helpful because I tend to be the other way. I tend to like, there'll be spaces of time in between me going to the canvas or that type of thing. And so what happens is the energy builds up. It's like a volcano to where I, it's just like, I'm so like, I can't wait anymore. It starts to become like an irritability. Like I've got to do it. Like, and then I go and then I might do a whole lot in a short period of time. But there was something really beautiful in making that commitment to just daily doing something, but no pressure as to what that was. I love or that. How long I love that. And I know that I know that feeling of grumpiness. Like I often can tell, like, oh, I just I need to paint. Like the, I'm getting really grumpy. Like I have a negative thinking in general about life. And then if I just go paint for an hour, I'm fine. I'm happy. It just needed, it's like I got clogged or something <laughs> and I just needed to touch in. I needed to feel that energy. I, 
They needed that, like that experience is so life-giving. Yeah, it's like water in a dam, you know? It's like it's built up and it's just wanting to flow. It's wanting to movement. It needs movement. Creativity needs that flow, that movement. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for saying sure. So I wanted to play with you guys today. I wanted to do a little uh, experiment um, that I hope you will play along with and enjoy. And this is based on the training I did in the expressive arts where you move people from one art form to another. And, and the idea is really that you're using different parts of yourself, different parts of your brain. And, and I'll be really curious what this is like for you. I'll say more after we do it. Um, but if you could all just take a moment to get some paper and pen. And if you have anything around that you like to draw with, could be just colored pens or um, crayons, but a black, just a pen is fine and a piece of paper. Preferably online, but whatever you've got is fine. This is really, uh, this is not about creating masterpieces. This is about sort of playing and having some fun. I'm just going to give it a minute. So at least the people who are on camera, I can see that they've got what they need and are back. And just simple, simple stuff is fine. It doesn't have to be complicated. You're initially going to be writing. So you can just have a pen and a piece of paper. <laughs> Just about everybody's settled in. So I'd love it if you just take a moment and close your eyes. I'm going to have you do a very short visualization. And think about the word home. H-O-M-E. What is home to you? If something negative comes up, I want you to step into the realm of imagination and create what you want home to be. Conjure that in your imagination. And just notice what you notice. It might be an image, you might be hearing words. Is home a place, a location, a building? Or is it a place inside of you, a feeling? There's not a right or wrong answer. Whatever, whatever occurs to you is perfect. Allow yourself to sink into this, whatever, whatever you're experiencing, just stay with it for a moment. And see what you notice. Is there a color? Any emotion? Are there people around? Animals? Nature? Sounds? Whenever you're ready, I'd love you to come back into the room you're sitting in and open your eyes. Just feel yourself on your chair or your couch or whatever. 
And I want you to take a piece of paper and write the word home like this, kind of vertically. Does that make sense? Just H O, you know, H at the top and O down the side, down the the left side of the page. And I'm gonna give you about 10 minutes. And what I want you to do is write some poetry. And this is like, don't worry, you don't have to read this or ever share it. But those four letters are gonna be the first four letters of either sentences or words and see what emerges. I want you to just play with this. It's, it's, poetry is really just structured writing where you're, you're adding interesting line breaks to prose. That's all it is. It's not anything fancy. Anybody can write poetry. So I'm going to be quiet and set a timer. And you can keep your camera on or off. It's up to you. And I'm going to do it too.
if for any reason you finish early, go ahead and make several. I think I'm going to bring you all back now and we'll move on to the next part of this exercise because I want to make sure we have time to talk about it at the end. Um, so next, I want you to tune back, you know, sort of remember what you were, had been tuning into about at home, you know, keeping your poem in mind. And now I want you to spend, let's say I'll give you seven minutes this time. I'd love you to draw home, whatever that is. It can be abstract, it can be concrete. It doesn't matter if it's a masterpiece. It can just be a bunch of scribbles that nobody can recognize on the paper. This is just for you. You know, have fun. And if, if you get done, before the seven minutes is up, just, you know, make another one, 
you know, just keep exploring, but stay in the realm drawing. If you're judging what you're doing, just uh, let go of that thinking and keep moving because this really is just for fun.
And just see if you can finish up what you're doing. And come back to the group. You can always go back to it. Or you can keep sketching if you want while we talk. But I want to make sure we have a little bit of time for a conversation about your experience. I'm curious if anybody noticed anything new that they thought or a new understanding that emerged that can be quite simple as they were going. Like for me, I did my, I did, I wrote like four or five little poems that were very short. And then um, with my drawing, and it surprised me what the focus was. Chris. Yes, well, um, the words, the, the words were, were, I wrote H-O-M-E and, um, and what, what came up was healing is the om, the sound of me as I entered the eternal flow of life. Home was always here, inside as always, love is life, is home, is now. Now that was the words. <laughs> But the drawing, uh, the painting, um, ah. can you see what that is? Yeah, I just made it on, put it on speaker so I could see it bigger. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, How it's was a, that? It, it's a baby in a womb. Ah. Uh, for yeah. me. And, and uh, that's really interesting because that's really home, isn't it? Well, I, there's That's not a really right or wrong awesome. answer. You know what I mean? There's not a right or wrong, but isn't that no, but interesting? Just, it just made so much sense that it's something inside. It started inside my mother. <laughs> and it, it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, and that's always with me. Yeah. And, yeah, and, but uh, isn't that interesting? Like, it, did you have I, any, because that sounds like an insight to me. Well, it was because I, 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 I uh, well, yeah, it's very much, very much, very interesting. There's sort of, um, some family, well, we've been talking about some family issues and, and uh, we've been looking at my, some of the relationships with my mother and my family and, 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 and um, but just realizing that, it, that it's not the external family, really. It's, it's an, in, that, 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 that it's something inside of me and, and the, the painting or drawing I just made was like, uh, well, where did that come from? Uh, uh, so uh, the wonderful feeling of, of uh, I would never in, uh, have, have imagined that I would draw this, <laughs> uh, but I did. Uh, so thank you. Isn't that amazing? Like what I love about the, the play is there's something about moving from one art form to another, it deepens our experience yeah. and understanding and it and it can facilitate insight which you had like something really meaningful emerged for you and i love that so do i thank you thank you thank you for sharing gretchen let's unmute myself was interesting for me to write down home and then start writing about each letter. And I came up with H-O-M-E, hope, ordinary, more, and everything. And I wrote a full page, which will go into my poetry book after it's revised, mm -hmm. that someday will be published. Mm -hmm. And what about the drawing? What did you so notice when you drew? Is like this. And it's the... Give me, hold it, keep holding it up. I need to get on speaker. Nice. 
Nice. It's so expanding. There, we can't hear you when the paper's up. I think you have okay. to put it down. It's ever expanding. Uh huh. Both in all directions. Nice. Look, and did you did you notice anything in the shift? Like, did you see something new, or to have any insights? The thing that's been occurring for me both today and lately is this ever expanding knowing reaching, deepening um, of, of, of who I am uh, and, and what I'm about. Um, and the process never stops. It's never stopped, both in my mind or at a cellular level. The right. growth and dying is always happening. It's, it's life. That's beautiful. It's it's been an incredible period of time in my life. Yeah, I just but I want to focus on the exercise. Yeah. Like, what did you notice about the movement from one to the other? Like, it it uses different parts of our brain, writing and then drawing, and it and it can create unusual connections and new well, new thoughts. I think to think for this the connection. Or you know, it's interesting how I came up, took hope, I mean home, and came up with different words that somehow expand my grounding in home. And it's grounding within myself is home. The more I feel connected to the earth, to the sky, the more home I am, and the more home I am. The the more I notice my creativity grows, expands, I laugh more. I laugh a lot anyway, but. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's beautiful, you. Gretchen. Thank you. Like I, 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 um, I feel like I vacillate between thinking of home as an external place that provides shelter and safety and in an internal experience of home. And that's why I, I was saying there's no wrong answer. Like this is just an exploration. It's not, there's not a correct way to do this. And it can be interesting to take a concept like this that carries a lot of weight for a lot of people and just play with it. Does anybody else have anything they'd wanna share that they noticed? You don't have to share what you created unless you want to. But if Karen. Hi, uh, well, I, I'm not sure if I was, I don't think I was surprised. I think um, that it just, home is, you know, I just at home is how I feel when I'm in bed reading curled up. And that's what happened here too, you know. But the, the writing just sort of, uh, you know, home is my kitchen where I cook and eat and work and where I sometimes do watercolors. And my and what did surprise me is that I, I remembered that my son's and my ex-husband's ashes are in my kitchen. <laughs> They're in my home, you know? And I said, I my current husband is in my home, even though technically he brought me into his home. Um, uh it's what I feel when I remember my home growing up you know being in bed on a snowy night and you know I brought in the mountains again you know it's there mm -hmm. see it um, hold on hold it up for a second I yeah I just wanted to put you on speaker yeah beautiful yeah so it's you know and I was a child who learned to read really young and, and, and it's, uh, that's, I think that biggest surprise is that I was focusing on the reading because that's really what I've been doing a lot of mm -hmm. for a long time. But it lately, it's, it seems like it's, it's the thing I do rather than to make artwork is that I read. And I think, uh, that I think that there can be a natural flow in what we're drawn to do. And, and I think it's beautiful that reading feels like home. 
Well, it, I've been reading about my home. I've been reading about the prairie. I've been reading the history of Nebraska and the Sioux Indians and written from a very, very, very deep uh, woman's experiences growing up there as a pioneer. And I've been, I mean, that's, you know, I've been drawn to that area for, as, as you know, a long time, um, but deeply got into Nebraska the last time I was home. <laughs> Beautiful. Traveled, yeah, to Beautiful. visit a friend I hadn't seen in, in 50 years. And she lives in Keystone, Nebraska. So wow. there you are. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's, that's it really, it's been a powerful thing, these histories that I've been reading about mm -hmm. Crazy Horse and the Cheyenne. And mm -hmm. so it's yeah, not what I'm it's... making art about, but it is what I'm thinking about. Yeah, but if there's no judgment. No, I know. I know. I got what it. What we do or how we spend our awareness time. of this is where I'm at in my head right now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, do we need to end right at the hour? Because I'm watching the time. Or can we um, go a couple minutes over? We can go a couple minutes over if it's all right with everyone here. I see that. I just wanted to see what Dominique wanted to share. Yeah, me too. And then sort of give everybody a, a sign. -up. So, Dominique. Yeah, hello. Um, yeah, for me, it was quite nice because I was in this really warm feeling when I, when you said this, what is home for you? And it was so colorful for me and I was so patient. And then it was quite funny because you said, okay, write the word down home. And I was like, what? No, I don't want to go back in my head. It was like, no, I want to be in this feeling and I want to go deeper inside. And I already started to draw some little things like it was the feeling of, I want to let it go. You know, it's like flowing out. And then it was like, oh, okay, I have to think about. And I, I, I got a little lost in this connection because I had this feeling and it was inside of my heart. And I was like, oh, I want to stay there. And then I have to go back in my brain. And it was like, no, I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I was so happy that you said, okay, yeah, now you can draw. And I was like, oh yeah, I can start. <laughs> So it was for me, yeah, quite nice to go back to the drawing. Well, you saw and... your, your preferences. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but it, it, I, I was used to it. So it was not, uh, not a new box for me, but it was like, okay, no, I don't want to go in my head again. I want to be in this feeling and then, oh yeah, I can draw. <laughs> so it was quite funny. <laughs> no, but I love that. And I love that you're willing to play with, even though you yeah. had resistance, you participated anyway. Yeah, of course. And I also, in my drawings, I have also wrote some words. So it was not just only drawing. So I connected a little bit more. But yeah, it was quite hard for me to go out of the feeling and inside of my brain. So, but yeah, thank you. It was a nice. Thank you. Uh, thank ask. you. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> I, I just put in the chat, I just wanted to say, because I, I want to be respectful of people's times, my email. If, if you have any questions or you want to reach out to me, if you didn't get a chance to share. And also there's links to a couple things that I'm launching. Like I'm going to start doing probably a couple times a month, an experiment like this with groups where we move people through different art forms. And that's the link that says permission to play. I want it to be fun. And I'm also uh, launching a group with Christian McNeil, where we're going to explore more in depth the the principles, this thing, some of you aren't as familiar with the three principles, but we're going to be doing experiments and looking at, you know, is it true that thought creates our reality? Like we'll give practical uh, exercises to see what that's like. Um, and that's going to be really fun too. Anyway, there's links to both those groups in the chat if you're interested. Um, and it's just been delightful to be with you all. And I'd be happy to hear from any of you if you didn't get a chance to share, because I love, I love this kind of experiment and playing with the arts. Sorry, I thought somebody was asking a question. <laughs> anyway, thank you all really such a delight. And thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here. Thank you so much, Sandra, for taking us through this experience. It's been wonderful. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you.
Good to see you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay, down here. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs>